Hi guys, welcome back. I hope everyone out there is safe and well and you've had a good week. I've had an okay week myself, actually. I had someone in doing a little bit of decorating in my house, actually. And it turns out he's a, a British Airways pilot who's been furloughed and he's just been doing it on the side to bring in a bit of extra cash. Uh, anyway, so he, he got on with the job and uh, I, I noticed uh, he was being very careful with the skirting boards when he did those, which was good. And I said, uh, do you have to concentrate quite hard when you're doing the skirting boards? And he just said, no, I'm, I'm just on autopilot most of the time. Uh, anyway, so I said, it, we had a little bit of a chat and it turns out he's uh, been just living at home with his wife for the last couple of months um, during the lockdown. And I said, that must be difficult. It puts a strain on any relationship, I guess. And he said, yeah, it was fine at first, but uh, just recently we've run into a little bit of turbulence. Uh, anyway, so he, he carried on about his work, did a great job. I felt a bit awkward after that. So I said, oh, nice weather we're having. And he looked out the window and said, yeah, it's just coming up to three o'clock local time. Uh, the temperature is about 21 degrees centigrade. And we've got a light southwesterly wind. Anyway, before I knew it, he was done. I said, wow, that was quick. He said, yeah, we're running a few minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, so he, he, he did a good, good job. Uh, the front room looks a lot better. And I must say, he made a great job of the landing. To find out more about Gravitas Perom, the fantastic Fougere fragrance created by perfumer John Stephen for my brand, follow the link in the description to visit NortonandWilson.com. Okay guys, hello, welcome back. So today we're going to be having another episode of Fragrances of the Stars, fragrances worn by famous male celebrities. Let's get stuck into it. We've got some interesting people today uh, of all different eras, I hope. Don't forget if you like the video, please do hit subscribe by hitting the button down there. If you're not already subscribed, then you won't miss any of my future output. So, first up, I'm gonna talk about David Beckham. David Beckham, of course, the famous footballer or soccer star, came to prominence with Manchester United, probably the arguably the biggest team here in the UK back in the mid 90s, went on to have a, a stellar career with them, winning the league many times and the European uh, Champions League. Also uh, played for England, of course, the international team. And he um, had a great career also going on to Real Madrid, LA Galaxy in the USA. And apparently now he's starting a team over in the States called Inter Miami. Let me know if anyone out there over in the States knows any more about that. So David Beckham, hugely uh, interesting, charismatic figure. And uh, the fragrance of choice for him, apparently, is Creed's Erolfa, one of my absolute favourites, a beautiful citrus aromatic fragrance, lovely, natural, bright, zesty citrus notes in the opening, a sort of salty sea air vibe, maybe an ambergris note in there giving it that. Really, really fresh, vibrant, invigorating, lovely stuff. And I just want to mention a great alternative to this that I've recently been sent very kindly by the people at Parfums Vintage, Euphony Intense smells almost exactly the same, bang on, but the performance is amped up to the max. Uh, Rolfa just okay in performance. This one, superb, really, really long lasting, strong, great sillage, so Euphony Intense by Parfums Vintage. I'll be reviewing that fully very soon, I hope. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month, and you get an extra video from me every week, plus you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Moving on then, who are we going to look at next? Oh, we're going to do Wacko Jacko. Michael Jackson, uh, of course, huge, influential, massive, famous figure. Sadly, no longer with us since about 10 or so years ago. Apparently, the fragrance that he liked to wear was his signature scent, apparently, was by a house called Jean Desprez and it's Bal à Versailles, 1962 release, apparently an oriental fragrance aimed at ladies. I've seen it a couple of times. I don't think I've ever tried it. I love the bottle, the rather interesting old fashioned design. Very potent, often compared to Guerlain's Jiki, apparently, which means there's a little bit of animalic funk in there. Notes include rosemary, orange blossom, mandarin rose, jasmine, ylang lang, patchouli leather, vanilla, benzoin, cedar, uh, and there are resinous notes too. So very, very potent, floral, powdery, sweet fragrance, apparently, and aimed at ladies, but apparently Michael Jackson used to really like that one. Um, I never actually found a particular Michael Jackson track or album that I particularly cared for. 
Just saying. I'm not saying he wasn't talented, but I, I can't say I've ever really cared for his music. Sorry. Okay, moving on then. We're going to talk about someone way back in time now, Sigmund Freud, the founder of Modern Psychoanalysis, the neurologist from Austria, uh, born in the mid-19th century. And apparently, his signature scent was Selection Vert from Creed. I haven't got a bottle. I wish I did. I at least want a decan. It's a very expensive one from their most exclusive range. Notes include neroli, citrus, pepper, mint, herbal notes and ambergris. It's super zesty and bright. The notable twist of mint is perhaps its defining feature. Most people feel that it doesn't perform particularly brilliantly, especially when you feel uh, consider how uh, expensive it is, but a kind of an appropriate choice for a, a, a psychological clinician who maybe wants things to be clean and bright smelling. I think that's a, a good choice for Sigmund Freud. Okay, next up, we're gonna go with Zayn Malik. Zayn Malik, of course, famous for being one of the members of One Direction. They came out almost, I think, like 10 years ago now. Uh, kind of a boy band, not really, I'm not really their target audience, so uh, I actually don't know, is he still in that band? Are they still going? Is he in the where are they now file? No idea, actually, to be honest with you. But according to the internet, he likes to wear Dolce & Gabbana light blue. A very pleasant, perhaps unremarkable, crisp, clean, aquatic, fresh fragrance. Uh, does anyone out there favour that one. I personally don't own it. Notes include mandarin, rosemary, musk in there, but really you just pick up on this kind of soapy, aquatic, very pleasant but unremarkable air. Other things like Nautica Voyage would be comparable in my mind to this one. So many other kind of fresh citrus fragrances out there. Kind of surprised that he doesn't, you know, maybe if he likes that kind of thing, Neroli Portofino or something more expensive and exclusive, but reputedly he likes Dolce & Gabbana. Light Blue. Let me know what you think about that, guys, in the comments down below. Next up, then, we are going to deal with uh, Keith Richards, the famous Rolling Stone. And apparently, according to an article that we found a photo from here back in the mid 90s, he likes Habit Rouge from Galan, a beautiful citrus combination with floral notes and a little bit of sweetness in the base and a very, very classy choice indeed. He also mentioned it, I think, in an autobiography that he likes to wear this one. So a beautiful, classy fragrance from the House of Galan. You can pick it up online for great prices. I've got the Eau de Toilette, lovely rose note, bitter green notes, citrus, and this classic Guerlain kind of benzoin vanilla thing in the base. They call it Guerlainard, and I think this one has a bit of that in the base. So lovely stuff. You can also make out a bottle of uh, the aftershave of Fahrenheit in the picture there, and that's a classic, of course from Dior. Next up then, Conor McGregor, the uh, Irish MMA fighter, an absolute madman from what I can see, a frightening figure in my eyes. There's a picture here which appears to show that he owns Aventus by Creed, Prada's Lom, and they said uh, underneath the picture, Tobacco Vanilla. I can't make it out in that picture, but that's what people are claiming. Any fans of the uh, M is it MMA, that kind of fighting that he does? I See, I'm not up on a lot of this modern stuff that goes on these days. I mean, I understand boxing, but this other cage fighting type stuff, I have no clue. Anyway, uh, any Conor McGregor fans out there, apparently he likes Aventus, Prada Lom, and uh, do, do you like that kind of stuff, guys? I don't follow it, I have to confess. Okay, moving on then, we're going to go with another contemporary star, Justin Bieber. Do you have Bieber fever? Well, b back a few years ago, it was quite prevalent, wasn't it? Um, Justin Bieber apparently likes to wear Carolina Herrera, Herrera for men. I was surprised by that because I thought maybe, if anything, by then maybe more like CH Men or CH Men Privé. This one's a real old release from 1991. I've never tried it. Uh, it has quite an interesting note listing, and I'm, I'm, it sounds like the kind of thing I might like. Uh, rosemary, lavender, lemon, neroli cloves, uh, geranium, sandalwood, tobacco, ambergris. It was Carlos Benayim with Rosendo Mateo, two classic great names of the perfume world who uh, composed this one. So apparently that's what Justin Bieber likes to wear. Of course, again, he's, I'm not his target audience, uh, but I didn't actually mind. I quite liked that song, Love Yourself, which I did a rather embarrassing cover version on um, of a few years ago in the intro to a video. I thought that was quite a good song. So let me know what you think about that. Next up, Sammy Davis Jr., a classic crooner from the mid uh, well, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, really, that was his era. Uh, he was famously in the film Ocean's Eleven. He was famous for being part of the Rat Pack with people like Frank Sinatra and uh, who else? Uh, Dean Martin, people like that. Apparently, he favoured Aramis. 
the originals Aramis Cologne or Aramis Eau de Toilette, they call it now. Lovely, spicy, leathery fragrance from the mid 60s. It was released. Beautiful, classic French perfumery. There are some floral notes, there's freshness, there's leathery elements. It's definitely quite spicy and woody. It's very old school smelling, but also very classy and refined. And I think a perfect choice for the, you know, uh, they just don't make people like him anymore. And in a way, they don't come up with fragrances like this anymore but it is a really classic, classic fragrance, still available very affordably online these days. So let me know if there's any Aramis fans out there. Okay, next in the list, we're gonna to go to an English gentleman, Morrissey, the famous singer who came to prominence with the Smiths in the mid 1980s. I really like Morrissey. Uh, I like it, well, uh, some of the things he's said and done, I, I don't condone maybe, but he's a bit controversial, but I like his music. I like the kind of melancholy in it and the lyrics of the Smith songs and his early uh, solo career stuff, quite witty and very different to your average fare. So I kind of like him. And apparently the fragrance which he likes to wear is Incense Avignon by Comme des Garçons. Kind of appropriately charismatic, enigmatic, non-obvious choice for the rather niche taste that would be Morrissey. Uh, it's apparently reminiscent of a Gothic cathedral. Notes include spices, patchouli, musk, oak moss, myrrh, elemi, vanilla, chamomile. I'm keen to try this one now and I, I just love to know how Morrissey smells. So yeah, definitely, definitely keen to try that one out. One gentleman is left, one of my favourite people in the list, Steve McQueen. Uh, a huge film star back from the 60s and 70s. I really liked his role in the film Papillon where he plays a French uh, prisoner on a penal colony and he did a really great job on that film. Anyway, his famous signature scent, this is quite a well-known thing, Eau Sauvage from the House of Dior, a classic citrus aromatic, came out in 1966. It was Edmund Rudnitska who composed it, beautiful citrus opening white musk in the base, a bit of vetiver, some herbal green tones, and a keynote of hedione, the magic ingredient which was supposed to give a man more sex appeal. It's in a lot of fragrances, hedione, and it's actually apparently someone in the note told me in Aventus. Not usually a listed uh, note, but it's an ingredient. Eau Sauvage, absolutely brilliant stuff. Maybe the Aventus of its day, and apparently worked wonders for Steve McQueen back in the 60s and 70s, I guess. Okay, guys, thank you ever so much for watching the video. Don't forget, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.